what I like to have people know is that in order to feel comfortable working there, we're very much based in love, compassion, and empathy, and harm reduction. So we are not a abstinence-based only type of program, which means that we have a high degree of tolerance for people who are struggling and who are relapsing and aren't getting it together quickly. We never kick someone out of treatment because they're not compliant in some way, and we don't even use that language. So the language that I often ask people in interviewing is about uh, motivational interviewing and stages of change. I think it's very easy as a new person coming into the field to forget that the client isn't matched maybe where you are, and it's important to assess for that and understand where they are before you try to make some form of recommendation. So really understanding the culture of the person that's in front of you is extremely important. And again, having that kind of compassionate approach to the work that we do, and I think that starts with yourself. <coughs> so to the degree that you have kind of a give yourself a break attitude, I think that that comes out the most in this work of counseling. And we do a lot of work um, with patients who have children. And one of our uh, new but the new things that we're approaching that I really am in favor of is having uh, children's services in our, with our outpatient families. Because generationally we see addiction just, it, it slices right through the generations of a family. If we can, instead of treating people when they get to be teenagers and young adults and older adults, if we can start with our young people, and, and I mean preschool children, and get them a better foundation into their emotional development, into their ability to uh, socialize well and, and learn in school, because many of them have been, um, I don't want to say abandoned, but neglected as a result of their parents' academic And so that impedes their early learning and their early development emotionally and socially. So we want to start looking at that with the patients that come into our outpatient facility and work with them. So we have a lot of outside connections. It takes more than just treatment to help a family heal. It takes all of those outside resources uh, to work with families. And we believe that, and that's, that's one of our goals is to know what we can do to help them outside of just them coming to our treatment. Um, we are a drug and alcohol treatment facility. We are, I believe, an abstinence-based um, drug and alcohol treatment. Uh, we do group therapy and individual therapy. Uh, we do cognitive behavioral therapy, especially rational emotive behavioral therapy by Dr. Albert Ellis out of New York. Um, we have a family program, so we really encourage the family members to come to our family program, whether it be for their people that are in inpatient, or their loved ones who are doing outpatient because we want the families involved. And I always have this thing is that when the family members come with the patient for the assessment, we know we have a much better chance at helping that person rather than the patient just showing up by themselves. Um, and of course, if the family doesn't show up, then we try to get consent forms so that we can bring the family in, have individual uh, sessions with them, have them a part of our family program. What I learned at Providence from starting there is um, how to be a professional. And um, that is something that, that I won't, I would never got anywhere else, I don't think, um, at, at my age. And so it's, it's been a very good, huge blessing. And I had, you know, I had to learn a lot of things. You know, they were, they talked to me from the very beginning. This is still the same. We do have policies and procedures because we work for a large organization. Um, we're JACO accredited. Um, we have surveys that come through our hospital. So we, um, unfortunately, for some things it's great to have policies and procedures, and I love it because it's part of my job. Um, but it, it would be nice I, when we worked in a smaller agency where it's kind of like, kind of could help and make some rules as you go and kind of work on that. But when you work at a large organization that is managed by, um, you keep your business running by JACO and a lot of stuff with the hospital base, then you have to work with your policies and procedures. One thing I love about what I do um, is that if somebody calls and they need treatment services and they don't need our services, I'm going to help and our staff is trained to help them find services that are actually right for them. So even if we say have a pregnant woman who wants to come in and we could get them in right away, we will say to them, hey, 
here's four other numbers. We want you to call them because they have residential and they, they could probably get you in right away and you can do a whole 28 day program with them or you can do 15 days. Where our program is very limited and we want to make sure with something as acute as pregnancy that they get the best service um, because sometimes we might bring them in for detox and then another facility doesn't have a bed to go anywhere and so then they're kind of in limbo. So we're always um, referring people even if they need residential treatment and maybe they don't sound like they need acute medical detox, we're referring them to Lakeside or referring them to recovery centers in Monroe um, if they, um, depending on what they're looking for all over the place. So my job, I constantly get to refer to other facilities and I don't feel like that takes anything away from our facility. I think it just, it's about the client and that's individual um, individual care and we focus on that from the very beginning, the first phone call um, with the client. So if you go to a CMAC clinic for the most part, you're gonna find a medical clinic and you're gonna find SUD and mental health together for one building, which I think is the coolest thing. Uh, one of the reasons why I joined CMAC. So, um, well, the clinic I work is strictly right now is a new building. They just had moved. Uh, we have mental health and, and SUD, which I think is the best thing that happened to the field. Because like uh, some of my colleagues have already said earlier, it's, um, it's co-occurring. So I like that we could work with mental health therapists alongside with the SUD counselors in the same building. And you can actually triage and talk about staff their cases together. Um, we do that a lot of times. Um, what else? So, um, in the clinic I am in, there's four of us, SUD, um, the supervisor, we have a CDP, and then we have uh, two CDPTs. So, that tells you that we hire interns and they're paid. Um, the curriculum we're currently using uh, is living in balance. For the, for the youth, is um, seven challenges. Um, so, we have a youth counselor, which is obviously my brush, she's not here today. Um, maybe she'll make it before we run out of time. So, so you have to be open-minded. I mean, I'm just talking from personal experience. You have to be open-minded, open to feedback, teamwork. She rightly mentioned that. I mean, they've said a lot of things, all the evidence-based practices. Um, teamwork is huge. There is no crystal ball. So you can't work in isolation. You become unhealthy. I mean, again, personal experience. Um, be willing to learn from your peers. Be open up to, open up to your peers. And I know you actually mentioned money again. Um, if you're expecting to get rich in this field, you're in the wrong field. <laughs> yeah, you have to love to work with people.